Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ah, ah, there's him. Thank you very much, Director Voter Education Publicity, uh, the Chairman, members of the Commission present here. The Secretary to the Commission, Resident Electoral Commissioners, who are with us by Zoom, Directors, other staff of the Commission, and our distinguished members of the press, good afternoon. Thank you. The Chairman, sir. It is exactly one month and one day since you handed over the affairs of the Commission to my colleagues and I, pending your screening by the Senate and swearing in by Mr. President for another term of five years as Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. My colleagues and my humble self Heartily congratulate you, Mr. Chairman, over your reappointment. And on behalf of the Commission and staff of INEC, I warmly welcome you back. We pray that the Almighty will see you through this weighty and difficult national assignment. As you are aware, sir, during the period, the Commission conducted by elections into 15 
constituencies across 11 states of the Federation. In fact, the last of the elections was concluded only yesterday with the supplementary elections in 14 polling units of the Bakura State Constituency of Zamfara State. I'm happy to note, Mr. Chairman, that the elections were all conducted and concluded successfully in spite of a wide range of challenges. You know fully well that in many places the terrain was difficult. In Bayelsa, for example, we unfortunately lost six police officers whose boat capsized while escorting our staff and material to the riverine areas of southern Ijo. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Baesa did not only have difficult geographical terrain, but also difficult political terrain. Other constituencies like Imo North, Isuzo, in Enugu, in Enugu State, Cross River North, Plato South, Ibaji, and Das in Bauchi also had difficult terrain, both geographically and politically. In Lagos East, the case was that of sheer size of the constituency. That was also a challenge. In other places, the challenges were compounded by the hostile security environment. Bakura in Zamfara and Bakuri in Kasina are examples of constituencies in bandit territory. Another example in this category is the Nganzai State constituency in the war zone of northern Borno. There, our men and materials were deployed under full escort of armed policemen and the military with full air cover of the Nigerian Air Force surveillance aircraft and helicopter gunships into Gajiram and back to Maiduguri. The staff, under a female electoral officer, remained resolute and conducted the by-elections successfully. The Commission appreciates this great feat. We also want to put a record, sir, the total commitment of the entire INEX staff from the National Commissioners, Resident Electoral Commissioners, and staff of those states whose election, where elections were conducted. The ad hoc staff also played their role and supporting Rex and other INEX staff of the headquarters. We all acknowledge everyone's contribution. It is also important to formally acknowledge the excellent support we enjoyed from our stakeholders, that is the political parties, civil society organizations, the media, and most particularly the security agencies that had the difficult task of securing the electoral environment for the commission to conduct the 5 December by-elections. Mr. Chairman, sir, a meeting of the commission with the Rex has been scheduled immediately after this handover ceremony to review the conduct of the elections and a commission meeting thereafter to harvest lessons learned for our use in future elections. On this note, Mr. Chairman, it is my singular honor and privilege to hand over the reins of the commission after what appears to me to be perhaps the longest one month in my life. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you and that, of course, for some of us, one of the most interesting chronicles of the Second World War, mm -hmm. the longest day. Yes. On that note, we are invited the Honorable Chairman to make his remarks and accept the handing over to the Honorable Chairman. Okay. 
His longest one month is over. It's over. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Evia. Yes. The Honorable Chairman, the Vice Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the, the High Chief. Dr. Ladipo Gumola and the No Chief Mohamed Haruna, <laughs> the Secretary to the Commission, the representatives of the various security agencies deployed to INEC. We have the police, the SS, the Civil Defense, the Federal Fire Service. Um, the Director General of the Electoral Institute, directors, members of the technical team, and I won't forget the INEC Press Corps. I missed you so much for the last long one month. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, let me thank Air Vice Marshal Mohazu and the five national commissioners for overseeing the affairs of the commission over the last 31 days. During that period, the national commissioners led by Air Vice Marshal Mohazu were able to successfully, as he said, conduct by elections for 15 constituencies in 11 states of the Federation, including six senatorial districts, the equivalent of two governorship elections. Each state of the Federation has three senatorial districts. So when you conduct six senatorial by-elections, it's like conducting governorship elections in two states of the Federation. And that includes the Lagos East, as Air Vice Marshal Mahadu said, which has a registered voter population more than the combined register of voters for the republics of Gambia and Kevat put together. So I want to thank you uh, for holding forth. The successful conduct of the elections under the acting chairman, supported by the five national commissioners, is a vindication of my policy over the last five years to nominate a national commissioner by rotation each time I was officially out of the country to oversee the affairs of the commission. In that way, all the national commissioners had at one point or another acted in my temporary absence. As a result, we have steadily built institutional capacity that the Commission can discharge its constitutional responsibilities at all times. I therefore wish to once again thank the Acting Chairman and the National Commissioner, Commissioners, the resident electoral commissioners who have joined us virtually for this brief ceremony, the Secretary to the Commission, the Directors, and the wonderful staff of the Commission. And I want to thank all the staff of the Commission for the rousing welcome back um, this, this morning. We will continue to discharge our responsibilities to the Fatherland. Our work continues. The quick passage of the Electoral Act amendment is a top priority and you will recall that I appealed to the Senate Committee on INEC during my screening for confirmation two weeks ago, urging them to conclude work, meaning the legislative processes for the passage of the Electoral Act Amendment by the first quarter of next year, meaning that we would be happy if the Electoral Act Amendment is passed 
by the end of March 2021. I am glad that in response, the Senate President has assured the nation only yesterday at the public hearing for the amendment of the Electoral Act that the National Assembly is committed to that target and it's not only achievable, but they will ensure that it is actualized. For our part, the immediate area of attention for the Commission is the resumption of the continuous voter registration exercise also in the first quarter of next year. And this will continue at least until six months to the 2023 general elections. So we are going to continue, uh, register voters continuously for well over one and a half years until six months to the next general election. We will also seize the opportunity as required by law to update and clean up the register of voters. We are happy with the register of voters. It is robust, but we'll continue to see ways, seek ways by which we can improve the quality of the register. I'm saying so because the credibility of any democratic election draws from the credibility of the register of voters is central. Without a clean, credible register of voters, you can have a credible democratic election. And we are committed to ensuring that we clean up the register of voters accordingly. In doing so, we hope to introduce a new technology for voter enrollment in 2021, learning from the lessons we learned in the previous exercise in 2017 and 2018. I'm glad that our resident electoral commissioners have joined us. In due course, the commission will give details of other activities going to the 2023 general elections. We have exactly 799 days to the next general election, holding on the 18th of February, 2023. And we'll ensure that we work hard to achieve the activities about two weeks ago, I was still speaking to the uh, technical team. We identified 1,508 activities that we must accomplish between now and election day in 2023. Some will be conduct, carried out simultaneously, but that is an interim list. I'm sure by the time we finalize, it will be a bit longer, but we are committed to ensuring that we achieve what, what you need to achieve ahead of the election. So my first activity today, as I said, is meeting with the resident electoral commissioners. Um, they will join us virtually as soon as light is back. But let me on this note once again, thank Air Vice Marshal Moazu, thank the national commissioners, thank all staff of the commission, thank uh, members of the security agencies deployed to INIC. I am back and work continues in earnest. Thank you very much. Thank you.